overwatering their plants. Watering tends to be one of those common things that people run into a challenge with when it comes to growing succulents. Today, I'm gonna to talk to you about a few ways to help you make sure you're watering your succulents the right amount, tell you a few signs that you're over and under watering, and a way to make sure that you prevent overwatering in the future. So it's important to start with the right kind of succulent for your environment and have your succulent in a well-draining soil in a pot with a drainage hole. Starting with those things will set you up for success and make it easier to water your succulent the right way. Now, for succulents, and especially if you're growing them inside, what you'll want to do is soak the soil of your succulents completely and then let them dry out completely before you water again. So I like to use a little squeeze bottle like this with my indoor succulents and I plug the drainage hole and then I pour water all over the succulent soil as much as possible. And then I let it sit for just a second to make sure the water is totally absorbed in there. And then I remove my finger from the drainage hole and let it drain out. So the idea here is you want your succulent to be wet all the way through to the center. Now, if you're not using a well-draining soil, you might find you have to let your succulent sit in the water for a little bit to make sure that water soaks all the way through to the center. But if you're using a well-draining soil like Bonsai Jack's succulent mix, this gritty mix absorbs water really quickly. So you can pretty much just pour water on and it will soak all the way through. Then here comes the critical part. You need to let your succulent dry out completely before you water again. And for most succulents, you're also gonna to wanna to add a few days after that to make sure that it's totally dry, they have a really nice period of drought before you water again. So with most of my indoor succulents, I end up watering about every two weeks or so. And here's the part that has helped me prevent over watering my succulents. And that is using the succulent tracker app. So inside the succulent tracker app, you can actually record when you water your succulent. So if I watered it today, I can simply tap right here and it'll show that it's been watered today. And then over here on the side, you can see, it'll show me the average number of days that I watered this particular succulent. So I have this one right here. I can go in and water it today and know that it's been 20 days since I last watered it. On average, it gets watered every 19 days and it's still looking good. So that's a sign that I should keep going with that watering schedule because the succulent is still healthy. So the succulent tracker app, and you can just search for it, succulent tracker in the Android or iOS app store has been a lifesaver for my succulents, literally. It has helped prevent over and under watering. I'm surprised at how often I realize I go between waterings when I should be watering a tad more frequently. So recording when you water is important because a lot of times you won't remember if it's been a day or two or if it's been a couple weeks. Hopefully you can tell the difference between the two. But the other thing that you'll want to do is keep an eye on your succulents and look for signs that they're giving you that they are over or under watered. So if you know that you have a tendency to overwater your succulents, err on the side of watering less frequently because succulents are really hard to revive from being overwatered. It's a lot easier to save an underwatered succulent. Once it's started to rot, a lot of times the damage has been done and you're not going to be able to save your succulent after that. So here are some signs that your succulent is underwatered. So first you'll wanna kind of feel your pot to make sure it's lighter weight than when you watered it, right? So once all of that water has dried up, this pot is going to be lighter than when it was full of water. So that's a great way to tell if the soil has dried out completely. The next thing that you'll want to do is what I call the squeeze test. And with that, you're gonna just take your fingers on each side of the second leaf and try and like bend it in half. And if, as you do this, it's pretty firm, that's a sign that your succulent does not need to be watered. If it starts to bend, that's a sign it's probably time to water. Now, there is an important factor with this. So here's an example of a very underwatered succulent. So you can see here, if I squeeze this, this folds completely in half. The interesting thing though is these succulents around it, the leaves are so firm, it's really hard to tell if these need water or not. But Haworthias tend to do okay with a little bit more water than other succulents. And so in this case, I'm gonna water this arrangement because 
um, because this one's giving me the signs that it needs water and these aren't showing any signs of overwatering yet. And they're all together, they have fairly similar water needs and so I should be fine to go ahead and water this. Now, here's the catch. If you find that your succulents are deflated like this, but you watered them two or three days ago, you do not want to water again. So you want to still give it that soak and dry time, but if it doesn't plump up right away, don't worry, it will eventually. Succulents don't change instantly. It's going to take a little bit of time for it to refill and really plump up again. So follow that soak and dry method. Look for deflated leaves that are soft or limp um, and just not as full as they used to be. So that is usually what I look for with my succulents to know if it's a new succulent, to know if it's time to water. So here's another example of an underwatered succulent. And if you look here, this leaf, you can see it looks deflated. It's kind of dried up. And as I squeeze these leaves, there is some give to them. You can actually, I think you can see over here, this is one that I've been squeezing a lot and it's all wrinkled on top, um, which of course it doesn't want to focus there. So looking for those deflated leaves is a really, really great indicator. And especially if you tend to overwater, you'll want to focus on those signs of underwatering. And once you see those, then go ahead and water again, following that soak and dry method. Now, what are some signs of overwatering your succulents? I don't actually have any physical examples with me at the moment. Most of my succulents tend to be, like I said, on the underwatering side. But with an overwatered succulent, your very first sign is that the leaves are going to be really large. They're going to be bulging. And a lot of times that means that they will come off the plant really easily. So a lot of times with a, a, like just barely overwatered succulent, if you tap the leaves, they'll just fall right off and they'll look healthy. They'll still be really plump and firm, but just tapping them, they'll fall off. That is a sign that you should not water. Um, another thing that will happen is the leaves will start to turn a little bit yellow or translucent. So if you think about also your fingers when you're in the bathtub or after you've been in a pool for a while, they will start to get wrinkled. An overwatered succulent, when it, um, after it turns yellow and a little bit translucent, it will start to wrinkle a little bit. And a lot of times people will get this confused with the wrinkling that you'll see from an underwatered succulent. So this one does have some wrinkles, but these again are deflated. An overwatered succulent is going to be really plump and really full. And then that yellowing and translucency are great indicators that it's getting too much. Now, if you start to see blackening or really dark and mushy spots, that is a more advanced stage of overwatering. Anytime you see overwatering, you wanna let your succulent dry out for an extended period of time. Don't water it until you're really confident that it's been dry and all of those areas that might be dark or mushy have dried up or healed or scabbed over. You can also unpot your succulent, um, loosen up the roots, get any wet soil away from the roots, and that can help it dry out faster. It also gives you a chance to examine the roots and see if they are black or dark and kind of flattening or mushy. That are, those are signs of rot. So if you have an overwatered succulent, unpotting it can be a great way to kind of diagnose and see how much damage has been done. But if you just see some of those early signs where the leaves are really, really plump and firm and bulging, go ahead and just decrease your watering frequency and that should do the trick and get you back on a path to a healthy succulent. So watering is a really critical part of keeping succulents alive. They do need water, but if you can pay attention to these signs, your succulents giving you that it's getting too much or too little, that will really help you adjust your watering schedule. And then, like I said, also recording what you're doing with your succulent when you're watering and using an app like the succulent tracker is a really great way to help you with that so that you don't have to be memorizing or right remembering all the days that you've watered especially if you have a lot of succulents it's nice to just have that record on hand that you can easily reference to see when you watered your succulents last so start paying attention to how often you're watering your succulents look for those signs that your succulent is giving you that it's getting too much or too little water 
And if you'd like a cheat sheet to help you better recognize these signs of over and under watering, go ahead and click the link in the description below for our free watering cheat sheet. And that way you'll have a visual reference that you can use when you're next looking at your succulents. All right, so watering is such a, such a lovely and challenging part of growing succulents for sure, but it's also super important. It's the thing that once you get it right, it makes growing succulents so much easier. And like I said, for me, my succulents have started to do so much better since I got the Succulent Tracker app. Um, I have over, let's see if we look, I have 318 plants or pots of plants um, in the app. So I have multiple succulents in pots, so I guess technically there's more than 300, but managing that many succulents has been a challenge. And I've actually even pared it down a couple months ago. I had 400 and I got rid of a bunch so that it was just less to maintain, less to worry about. So that's something else to keep in mind too. If you're growing succulents and you find your uh, collection is just expanding over time, which mine definitely has, and I find to be the case with most people who start growing succulents. You might start with one and then suddenly you have 15, 20, 100. As you get more, it gets a little bit trickier to keep them all happy. And like I said, that's one of the reasons why the app has been so helpful for me is for those plants that I know don't need to be watered as frequently and for the ones that do. Like all of my little, um, my little baby succulents, some of my leaf propagation or other propagation, those I water a lot more frequently than these bigger succulents. And so the app helps me keep track and see the average number of days that I'm watering. I can actually set a schedule in there and have it remind me every two to three days to water specific succulents. So um, it's super, super helpful resource and a great way to stop overwatering your succulents. For me, it's been a great way to stop underwatering my succulents because I frequently forget when I water. And so it's, it's happened very often where I thought, oh, I just watered it, you know, on Wednesday and it's Sunday. And turns out I watered them like two weeks ago and they do actually need water. So highly recommend checking that out. It's free to use for up to five plants. And then it's just $3 a month or $30 a year to use it for more than five plants. And it's available on iOS and Android. You can have it on multiple devices and have them all sync up. So super convenient. Um, we're actually going out of town soon and I'm super excited because I'm gonna leave this phone with my, um, my plant sitter and our tortoise sitter. And there's just a handful of plants that will need water while we're gone. Most of them are like chia and some other sprouts that we're going to feed our tortoise. And so I'm going to leave the app with her and it'll tell her which plants to water and where they're located. And that way I won't have to worry about her watering the wrong plants or these plants that need water frequently. I won't have to worry about them dying while I'm gone. So it can be used for other plants other than succulents too. All right. So with that, let's... Um, just a, I guess just a reminder. So today at the end of the video, I will be doing um, a drawing. One of you lucky people in the chat will get a Snappy Pots mystery box. And so the mystery box will come with three different colors of pots. They won't be these exact colors that you see here, um, but a, three brightly colored pots and then a bunch of snaps for, um, for the pots. So there's some holidays, there's some classic items, just a ton of different snaps to go on your succulents. And I'm super excited because today we also are launching a new set of Snappy Pots. So this one totally blends in with my background. Uh, this one's called Marine Dream. So this is one of our new limited edition colors, very oceany. And of course, with the ocean, you need some ocean items. So we have a bunch of different um, ocean animals and shapes, seashells and things that can go on your pot. This little seahorse is my favorite. And actually the other favorite that I have, it's really weird to do this on video and backwards, but um, there's a little, a little jellyfish and this one actually glows in the dark. So it's a bioluminescent jellyfish. Um, it glows blue in the dark and it is really cool. Um, there's a little sparkly ah, crab. Anyway, there's a bunch of different, bunch of different little shapes for that. Um, also came out today, we have some emoji snaps. 
So you can show off your emotions uh, or your succulent's emotions. Maybe your succulent is not happy today. So all of that. And these actually fit all the way down on our little one inch pots. Um, they just fit so perfectly and cute. We've um, been trying to get some more snaps out that work on the small sizes. And then two other designs that we have out is one is a set of like gemstones. And again, these also fit on the one inch pots. So there's little diamonds, ruby, emerald, a bunch of different gem shapes. And last but certainly not least is, oh, I didn't show you this color. Um, so we have this nebula, which is my one of my favorites. I don't know, I just love the blues and the pinks and the purples. That one's super fun. Um, I mentioned to you that I'm we're growing chia. Um, and so the other the other uh, set of snaps that we have coming out today are these face snaps. So they're interchangeable, like Mr. Potato Head style, um, a bunch of different eyes and mouths and um, eyelashes and all kinds of fun things. So this is kind of a basic one, but growing some little, a little chia plant. So a snappy pot chia pet. Um, but yeah, so those are all new out today. So you can just see those at snappypots.com. Okay, that was a little more of a tangent than I was expecting, but I'm super excited about these new colors. They're really bright and fun. And we actually still have some of our um, limited edition items from July out, or excuse me, from June out as well. So some patriotic stuff, um, beach set. So we have one that's actually like, there's a snap that is ocean waves and um, some beachy items. And I can't think of anything else off the top of my head. Anyway, lots of fun. So check those out at snappypots.com. Okay, and there's links in the description for that too. Um, da -da -da -da. Okay, Miss Adrian says, what is your opinion on fabric pots like grow bags? I just got my first one a few months ago for a large Raven ZZ and it's working great so far. Yeah, I'm honestly, I'm kind of torn on fabric pots. There's a lot of things I like about them. There's a lot of things that I don't. It, I think it really depends on your growing setup. So I bought a bunch originally because um, I would, well, I guess I, I'm still working with Mountain Crest Gardens. We're still an affiliate for them. But at one point they were sending me a bunch of different plants to kind of test out and try out. And I didn't want to be buying a bunch of pots and like moving stuff from one pot to another. But I also needed a place for them to grow without, um, I don't know, it was easy to transplant them from. So I got some bigger ones. I think they were like three and a half gallons. Um, they had handles on them. And I liked that they were really breathable. I liked that they were lightweight. And I felt like the succulents grew well in them. The things that I ended up not liking were, I, I prefer and recommend, um, you can see this on like all of mine, I like having the soil all the way up to the top of the pot that you're planting your succulents in because sometimes if the leaves come below the rim of the pot, those leaves end up like rotting or getting damaged from too much water um, just because, I don't know, just from touching the soil or being trapped in. I've just found that it's best or succulents tend to grow best if they're like planted above the rim of the pot or very, very close to the top. You can see here's another one that's um, right at the top. So with the grow bags, I felt like because they didn't have the structure that I couldn't fill the soil all the way to the top because if I like picked it up or moved it, it would like collapse and all the soil would fall out. So I didn't like that aspect of it, but um, I'm trying to think what else. I think that was the biggest thing is mostly just structure in general. Like it's nice to be able to carry them and move them easily. Like the ones I got had handles but the, in the end for me, like the lack of rigidity just didn't work. And they also don't have drainage holes, which is kind of offset by the fact that the, um, the material is really breathable. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I don't know. They, I, I think they can definitely work. Um, I probably wouldn't use them very much inside. I feel like, I don't know. I think the, the bottom of this, of the bag tended to still retain a fair amount of water. And that was probably, that and the lack of structure were probably my two biggest complaints. But I do think they can work well. So I think it's kind of just a personal preference in that regard. Yeah, great question. Um, 
Gabby says, I use the plug method with my bonsai jack. It makes watering a massive task, but if you don't do it, it will just pour right out. Yeah, it is <clears throat> it is a little bit tricky. I've actually just been kind of experimenting with a few different things. So currently, I don't actually, uh, I do sometimes, I don't always plug, um, I don't always plug the bottom, I guess you can't see that, I don't always plug the bottom drainage hole. Um, but what I'll do is I'll just squirt a little bit on top and then like go through all, like a, a whole section of pots. So um, my succulents are on shelves and so I'll go through like one shelf and I'll just squirt a little bit on top and then come back and squirt a little bit more. And so I'm not like drenching it. I'm not pouring so much water on that it's gonna completely overflow the pot, but I am pouring enough on that it should soak most of the soil. And so that way I don't have to like plug each one because with 300 plants, it takes a long time to water. No matter how I do it, it takes a long time. But like you're saying, like plugging it and waiting for, um, just like letting it sit for a minute and then draining it can take a lot of time. So. I have been looking at other methods and so far just kind of like squirting it on and then coming back and squirting it on again seems to work. The biggest issue I run into is if I'm not paying attention to how much water I'm putting on, a lot of times I'll like actually like drench the whole thing and so they end up with a big pool of water on my shelf, which works because my shelves are plastic, but I don't love just having the water standing on the shelf either. So it's something that I think it does kind of take some adjusting or getting used to but it does definitely help to, um, I think the ideal method is definitely to plug the drainage hole, let it sit for a second. And it doesn't even have to sit that long, but just pour the water on, let it sit, and then even just that long, and then set it down and let it drain. Um, yeah, it works. And it does, it does promote a much, much healthier root system. When you're, I guess that's not something I really covered in the beginning, but when you're using the soak and dry method, the reason why it works is because the soil um, gets wet all the way through. The succulent can absorb what it needs, but then it has that period of drought. And to an extent, the longer period of drought you have between waterings, the more um, drought tolerance your succulent will build up. So I've had succulents, like little, little baby succulents, where I'm watering them every couple days but then as they get bigger, I don't want to keep watering them every couple days and they will end up rotting. And so then I just gradually decrease the amount of water. Um, one of the things that can happen too if you're watering really frequency is just the succulent will get a dependency on that water, um, which sounds kind of silly, but I have seen people who grow succulents in water. Um, some of you have maybe seen like water propagation where you take a cutting and you hang it over water and then the roots will grow down into the water. The thing that I found with that is those roots are not very durable. If you take it out of the water, it's going to dry up just instantly. And so it doesn't have that drought tolerance because it's been in water for so long. Um, I also, yeah, it just, it doesn't develop a, a super healthy root system if you're watering all the time and you're much more prone to get um, rot that way. Yeah, Gabby says it's hard to do with the large pots that have, that the hole is bigger than my thumb. I feel you on that one. I have a few of those. One thing that I have actually, that I did with mine, um, you can see it here. This one, this pot just came with a little, a little plug that fits right inside this hole. And um, I ordered a set of like rubber stoppers. So I have some really big, beautiful pots from one of my favorite artists. Her name is Susan Ock, A-A-C-H. And she she designs her pot specifically for succulents, but her drainage holes that she puts in are like the size of a quarter. They're really big. And so with those, like you're saying, I can't plug them. There's like two or three of them. But what I did is I got these rubber stoppers that I can plug into those holes and then I can fill it with water. And then I just come back and unplug the holes and let it drain. So that can be an option too. They're pretty cheap. I think I got um, a set of a bunch of different sizes that was like $10. So, um, yeah. Okay. Oh, I don't know if I'm saying this right. Jord, Jordy, um, says I caught the end of the live. What's your take on bottom watering? I may have missed it, but definitely go back and watch the replay. Yeah. So I, um, I'm not opposed to bottom watering at all. I think it has a lot of advantages. One of the things that I, 
that I see happen most commonly is if you are using a gritty mix, bottom watering can be a little bit tricky. So for those who aren't familiar with the concept of bottom watering, um, basically what you do is you get a, let me see if I can demo it here. Um, okay, so you get a bowl or a and any sort of large bin, something that's bigger than your pot of succulents and you fill it with water. And then you take your succulent and you set it in and the, the idea being that the water, hmm, doesn't quite work, but the water will come up to nearly the top of the pot that you um, have. Yeah, the water level will come up to the, to the top of the pot. Um, if you're using a gritty mix, it's pretty crucial that the water comes up to the top of the pot. If it doesn't, that top layer of soil is not actually going to absorb um, very much water. So a gritty mix does not, does not like, the only word I can think of at the moment is wick. It doesn't like wick water up to the top the same way that a more organic soil mix would. So this one would be something that I would recommend bottom watering. And the nice thing with a like more traditional potting soil or something that's more organic is you really only have to have the water go up part way. And if you let it sit long enough, this water will, or this soil will just pull water all the way up to the top. Um, it takes a little while. And the, I would say the biggest downside with it, like I said, is if you're using a gritty mix, it doesn't work especially well. Um, it does take time, but you can also just leave your succulents for five minutes and then come back. So the downsides I see to it are sometimes you could leave your succulent in there too long. It's probably not a huge deal, but if you're leaving your succulents in that water for like an hour or two, I think it can cause problems with the roots. Um, but there's something else, but it is a good way if you're using a more traditional potting soil to make sure that the water is getting all the way through. So if you're not using a gritty mix, I highly recommend bottom watering because it's one of the only ways to really know that you're getting water all the way through the center of the soil, like really soaking it. Because if you're pouring water on top, traditional potting soil when it's all the way dry is hydrophobic, meaning it like repels water. And so if you're top watering, you'd have to like pour a little on, wait and come back, pour a little more on, wait and come back. I just noticed this has a bunch of spider webs in it. It's fun. Um, so bottom watering is better that way. Um, uh, another downside is because your succulents are sharing the water, um, I, most people will either put a bunch of succulents all in one place and let them soak together, or they'll just reuse the same water. The challenge with recycling water is that if one of your succulents has mealybugs or some sort of infestation, it's going to spread really quick to all of your other succulents. Ask me how I know. Um, what I was doing for a while is like Gabby was saying, I would plug this and then I would drain the water and I would recycle that water. I'd use it for the next succulent. So I just had a big bucket that I was draining all the water into. And I found I had a plant that had mealybugs and suddenly I had 30 plants that had mealybugs and I'm pretty sure it's because I was recycling that water and even though I couldn't see it I think it was passing the mealybugs among all of them. Possibly not but it's definitely a possibility or if there's like something in the water or in the soil you're much more likely to, um, to pass that along to other succulents. So I like the method, generally speaking. Um, I think it's just important to kind of be aware of some of the potential downsides. And yeah, I think those are my thoughts on bottom watering. Um, hello from Pennsylvania. Yes, Cheryl, this is the last day. This is really funny. It's not that funny, probably, but here you go. A little sad face about it. Hang on. But the great thing is you can come back and rewatch. And if you want to keep doing this, um, I know that we, we have some Second Lovers Club members here and um, we do these twice a month. So all a bunch of club members will get on a Zoom call and ask questions and get personal help with their succulents. So there's a link in the description of the video for that too, for the Succulent Lovers Club. It's super fun. Um, 
Oh, Margaret says she uses the tracker app and it's super useful. Yay. Um, yeah, and then Gabby says, I wish I could bottom water with Bonsai Jack. So you can um, just, you just have to make sure you fill, you know, the soil goes, or the water goes all the way to the top of the soil. Oh, you guys are so nice. I wish I could do this every day too. Frankly, I am exhausted. Um, it's super fun to come on, but it is definitely, um, it is definitely tiring. Okay. Um, Mara says, my panda plant had a few leaves droopy. So I think this is a sign. Yeah. So it sounds like you probably have a symptom of over or underwatering. And this is the thing that's tricky with over and underwatering is a lot of it is visual and then a lot of it is date based. And that's why I recommend using the app or something to track when you've watered. There's a chance that it's droopy overwatered. There's a chance that it's droopy underwatered. And to an extent, without seeing it or knowing the watering frequency, it's really hard to say like, yes, it's overwatered. And the soil plays a role in that too. So this has not been watered for almost a month and it's doing just fine. Like the leaves are actually really firm. Um, snake plant leaves can get a lot, like they're just kind of pliable anyway, but these are really firm for a snake plant. So this one is good to go for quite a while. Whereas this little um, Semper Vivum, it's, it's actually about ready for water. It's been two weeks maybe since it's been watered and the leaves are, yeah, the leaves are um, softer. You could, I've also had people tell me the leaves are droopy and what it actually is is lack of sunlight. So you can see how the leaves on the Semper Vivum are flattening out. That is because it's not getting enough light. So I've had this one outside because I have found they don't do super well for me inside. But um, if you've watched some of the other videos, I don't get, sorry, I get direct sunlight on my patio. And so everything's under a shade cloth. And so it ends up kind of stretching out because it's not getting enough light. So this is the first, whoo, first sign for a Semper Vivum that it's not getting enough light is it's like flattening out, trying to make as much surface area for it to absorb sunlight as possible. When a Semper Vivum is getting plenty of light, it will like curl up. Um, so instead of being like flat out like this, it'll curl up and be really tight when it's getting plenty of sun. So, and you can see this really well in the babies. You can see how those leaves are just um, warping outward. So um, take a look at that too and see if maybe it just needs more light. Okay, so let's go with the last question. Dove Darby says, do Portulacaria afra go dormant in the summer? If so, do they still need water during dormancy? My plant is still alive, but lost all leaves and regrew tiny leaves when spring and summer came. <sighs> this is, um, so if you've had the pleasure of being in our Second Lovers Club or um, emailing us, you've probably had a chat with Chantel, my lovely super assistant, she's amazing. And she and I were having a discussion about dormancy this week. And we were also chatting with one of the growers at Mountain Crest Gardens about this because we've had a couple people email us about um, our individual succulent pages. So at typesofsucculents.com, we have a list of almost 200 different succulents. Um, we list their dormancy, their water needs, their um, sunlight needs, how they propagate, all kinds of stuff. So basically like your quick start guide to a particular succulent. And we've had a couple people say, hey, you list this one as winter dormant, but it's actually summer dormant or vice versa. And it's not something that we just like, you know, we're just like, oh, we think this one's this, or we think it's this, like a lot of research goes into it. But the challenge with succulents is most succulents just naturally grow in the spring and in the fall when the temperatures are temperate, when they're not, it's not too hot, it's not too cold. Succulents are really Goldilocks plants in that sense. And even with sunlight, they're kind of that way. Like they need enough, but not too much that they burn. Anyway, so with dormancy, if you're growing outside, dormancy will be a factor. Like you don't really want to water aeoniums in the, in the summer because they are winter growers and they will shed and lose a lot of their leaves in the summer. 
They don't like the heat. They really like it cool, not cold. They are not a cold, hardy succulent, but they like it cool. So they'll shed a lot of leaves in the summer and then they'll grow back some new growth in the winter. Portolicaria afra, I cannot remember offhand if it is a summer or winter grower. Um, if you go to typesofsucculents.com and go down to, it's probably in the other category because we don't have like a portillacaria afra section, or you can just search on the website for portillacaria afra. I don't actually remember if it's summer or winter grower, but what I can tell you, because we grow a lot of this here, is losing its leaves is probably a sign that it's not getting enough water or that it's getting too much. I would say it's a watering problem, not so much a dormancy issue. Um, I have a ton of it in my yard and then I have some that I'm growing indoors as well. It can be a little bit particular indoors. I'm, I have found that that balance between too much and not enough water is trickier inside. Whereas the stuff outside that I have in the ground, it's like, I, can, I feel like I can water it whenever I want and it will just keep growing. Um, but then also, it, let's see, that one's on a drip system. So it gets watered on, I think, Mondays and Fridays and it's still growing. It's not directly under a drip, but it's very close to one. So if you're finding that the leaves are falling off, I would say start writing down when you're watering it and see what your watering frequency is. If those leaves are looking like deflated and getting dried and crispy, I'd water it more frequently. If the, if the plant itself looks really healthy and it's dropped a lot of leaves, it's probably a little bit too much water. Um, that said, some succulents can shed during dormancy. Aeoniums, like I said, are probably the best example of that. I have not seen it with elephant bush. I'm trying to think if I've seen it at though. I know that the ones that I've had inside that have lost leaves, it's been a watering issue. We, the ones in our yard, I've never seen them lose leaves. And we have some like in front of the pool house in our neighborhood. I've never seen those lose leaves either. So that's when I would say, um, it sounds like a watering issue. You do want to be careful with watering during dormancy. So regardless of whether a plant is summer dormant or winter dormant, I will say you generally want to avoid watering very frequently in the very hottest days of the year outside and the very coldest days of the year outside. Um, I water a lot more frequently in the spring and in the fall and I really cut back in like even right now, I have to be really careful because our humidity gets a little bit higher but um, over watering or just watering a little bit too frequently in the heat can cause your succulents to like boil from the inside and they just melt and disintegrate and fall apart and it's super sad. So I've had to really, really pay attention out there to my like indicator succulents. So elephant bush for me is an indicator succulent. It's pretty good at telling you if it needs water or if it doesn't need water. Mostly if it needs water, it will tell you by the leaves deflating. So, but as a general rule for outside succulents, I would reduce your watering frequency during the hottest month of the year and the coldest month of the year. So generally that's either July or August and then um, December or January. So for me, those are when I'm super, super careful about my outdoor succulents and watering frequency. Inside, it doesn't make as much of a difference. You will notice like seasons of growth and seasons of decline with your succulents inside, but it is not nearly as pronounced because they don't have the change in light. If you're using grow lights, if you're just using a window, they will have a change in light just because you know, the days are shorter, but they don't really have a change in temperature. And so light and temperature are the two things that, and watering frequency to an extent that cause dormancy. And so you just don't really get a true dormancy inside, but you, you will still notice a little bit of a cycle. So that's why I'd say pay attention to the signs your succulent's giving you that it needs more or less water. And again, I have a visual cheat sheet for you. Um, you can sign up for that in the description. Um, it's free. We'll just email it to you. And there's something else I was gonna say about that. 
and I now cannot remember. Yeah, pay attention. Oh, and then and then researching the individual plant. So this was the very first thing we talked about on Monday that each plant is a little bit different. If you told me that you had an aeonium and it's shedding a ton of leaves and it's July right now and it's warm, I would say don't stress about it and also don't water very much. Um, Portly care after those, not one, like I said, they typically see shed leaves. So I would, I would kind of keep an eye on it and see if you think it's over or underwatered. Um, another group of plants that can shed leaves or do shed leaves fairly frequently are cold hardy sedums. Um, so not a sedum like golden or copper tone sedum or like your sedum burrito. Those don't generally shed, but the more ground covery looking um, cold hardy succulents, a lot of those will completely lose their leaves. And it's almost like they bury themselves in the winter and then they come back and they put off new growth in the spring. So yeah, looking at the individual plant and seeing if it, um, if it tends to shed leaves is a really good way to go. Okay. Ooh, guys, we're at 40 minutes. Um, I am going to do our drawing and then I'll say farewell. But um, like I said, we, the replays of these will be up. You can go back and watch all the old ones. Um, I'm gonna do a drawing right now for the live Snappy Pots Mystery Box. And then we're gonna be choosing four people from each video um, who've commented either in the chat or in the comments um, to also win a Snappy Pot. So there's a total of, uh, let's see if I can do my math, 20 more Snappy Pots Mystery Boxes that we'll be giving away on Monday. So we'll just like reply to your comment or if it was in the chat, um, we'll find a way to tag you. I don't know how that will work, but we'll figure something out. So uh, with that, let's do today's giveaway. I'm gonna not look at it because I know that at some point I'm gonna hit the top or bottom and scroll. All right, and today's winner is, oh, uh, Dove Darby, sweet. And we even answer a question for you, which is fun. So email me at support at succulentsandsunshine.com with your address, and uh, we'll get that Snappy Pots mystery box shipped out to you next week. Um, if you guys want to, like I said, if you want to do something like this again, if you like this setup, I'd love to invite you to come join our Succulent Lovers Club. Just go to succulentsandsunshine.com slash club, and we do two monthly Succulent Lovers Club calls. So it's actually a Zoom call, so you're face-to-face -face with everyone. Um, Chantel generally hosts those, and you can ask questions and get feedback from people within the club community. You can also post in a community area. So it's not a Facebook group, it's a private Succulent Lovers Club um, kind of discussion area where you can post pictures, ask questions, show off. It's super fun. And then we have guest, work guest workshops every month um, with a guest speaker who comes in. So this month we're learning a really cool technique for painting concrete pots. Um, it's a follow-up to a previous workshop where we learned how to make concrete pots for succulents, which is super fun. Um, next month, Chantel is actually our guest speaker and she's going to be talking about greenhouses for succulents and um, pros and cons of having greenhouses, what to look for. And then we have um, a workshop we have two in August, another one on how to make hypertufa pots, which will be really fun. And then in September, we're doing a super succulent September. We're going to have a bunch of speakers come to the Succulent Lovers Club. And um, we're hoping to get some, I, I can't I can't say all the people at the moment who are we're coming, but we're going to have some really, really fun speakers. Um, the one that I can tell you for sure is we're going to have a succulent topped pumpkin making workshop. So it'll be a tutorial. So kind of bring your own pumpkin, bring your own succulent cuttings or watch it and then go grab the stuff and you can watch the replay and make one yourself. Um, my friend Laura Balaoro is coming to teach that. She has made probably thousands of succulent topped pumpkins and hers are gorgeous. So that will be really fun. She's going to show us everything you need for that and tips and how to make those. So that will be really fun. And then, like I said, we have a bunch of other speakers that will be coming to talk about various subjects around succulents. So it's gonna be exciting. So if ever there was a time to join, September is the month that we'll be doing a lot. And that's in addition to 
um, the two like succulent tea parties and the community and all of that. So it's a fun place to be. Um, succulentsandsunshine.com slash club for that. And thank you all. I know there's a bunch of you that have joined every single day, which has been so cool to see. Um, yeah, it's always, always fun to chat about succulents with you guys and hopefully everything goes well for you. Have a great weekend and we'll probably do this again soon. We'll see you later.